sing love, how can it be that thou, my God, shouldst die for me? Hey everyone, Pastor Bill Wiggs here from the Sunfield and Greenwood United Methodist Churches in Southern Illinois with a devotional for Wednesday, September 30th, 2020. Well, we are in our second devotion on 3rd John. Monday we started this little bitty book in the Bible, and today we want to continue on. We'll probably finish up on Friday, so this is going to be a really short series of devotionals, but it is the shortest book we have, so that's why it's that short. So if you haven't watched the introductory video on Monday, go back and watch it. I think it'll help you in the discussion here. But today we're going to start at verse 3. Hear now the word of the Lord. For I rejoiced greatly when the brothers came and testified to your truth, as indeed you are walking in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Beloved, it is a faithful thing you do in all your efforts for these brothers, strangers as they are, who testified to your love before the church. You will do well to send them on their journey in a manner worthy of God. For they have gone out for the sake of the name, accepting nothing from the Gentiles. Therefore, we ought to support people like these, that we may be fellow workers for the truth. As we come to verse 3, John is speaking directly to Gaius, the, the person who he wrote this letter to. And he says that he was rejoicing when the traveling preachers, evangelists, missionaries, whatever you want to call them, who he had sent to the churches there, wherever this is, somewhere in Asia Minor, so, you know, Greece, Turkey, somewhere in there, that Gaius cared for the brothers or cared for the traveling teachers that John had sent out. The New Living Translation says it this way, Some of the traveling teachers recently returned and made me very happy by telling me about your faithfulness and that you are living according to the truth. So he's commending Gaius for a couple of things. He's commending him for the fact that he took care of the brothers, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. But he's also commending him on the fact that he is holding to the truth. Gaius is holding to the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We've talked about this a lot and how important it is that we believe rightly. Behavior, the way we live, can only truly work and be honoring to God when it comes out of a heart that believes in the one true God and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, the God-man who came in the flesh, died for our sins, and rose again so that we could have eternal life. So Gaius is walking in the truth. He believes the gospel. He's faithful to the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's not buying into some of the, what the false teachers have been teaching. He's holding to the truth that the apostle John has taught him, and he is carrying on when these teachers come to town and these administrators who come from John, John is not able to come right now, and so he sends others Gaius is found to be steadfast in his faith. We all need to be found steadfast in our faith. Sure, we can disagree on the minor things. You know, how much water we use in baptism, what kind of liturgy we use in the church, whether or not we use hymns or contemporary music or 80s and 90s choruses or whatever. It doesn't matter. The things that are just small and really ultimately do not strike to the heart of the faith, no big deal. But the things that are absolutes, and we've talked a lot about those absolutes, you must hold to those if you truly want to be living for Christ and truly want to call yourself a Christian. And Gaius is doing that. And so John is commending him for it. He says that, he greatly rejoiced when he heard about the fact that Gaius was faithful, that Gaius was holding to the truth and walking in it. Remember, anytime he talks about walking in it, this is a perpetual state of being, that he does not deviate from the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And John goes on to say, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. 
or as the New Living Translation says, I could have no greater joy than to hear that my children are following in the truth. Again, he thinks of the believers and the churches that he has authority over as his children. They mean so much to him. They're, they're such a blessing to him. Uh, he has been their spiritual father in that he shared the message with them. And he really wants to see these young Christians grow up in the faith so that they will be ready to lead. And so he says, you know, my joy's there. Any pastor who sees a parishioner who just really is getting it, really understand what the pastor's been trying to teach, or really understands the word sometimes better than you do, I've mentioned many times uh, to my congregations, Murray German, who was in the, one of the very first churches I was appointed to, and she really knew the Bible. She knew it better than I did at the time, and she would very gently try to teach me a few things, and that was good, and I had joy. She was a joy to have in the congregation. Any pastor loves to have such people in the church who know the Word and are living by it. And he says, no greater joy have I had than to hear that my children, that the people I have authority over, are walking in the truth. He then moves on to the topic of hospitality. In verse 5, he says, Beloved, it is a faithful thing you do in all your efforts for these brothers, strangers as they are. He goes on to talk about it a little bit more. John had sent emissaries of his office. He had sent traveling teachers, missionaries, people who could help the congregation walk in the truth. Friday we will discuss the person who is being very overbearing and rejecting these teachers that were sent by John. But he wants to first commend the one who despite the evil deeds of another or despite the inhospitality of another or despite the rebellion of another still followed after what God would have had him to do to show hospitality to these teachers that John has sent. You know, there's a lot in the scripture about showing hospitality and the importance of doing that. A few verses that immediately come to mind, Romans 12, 13, when God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. Or how about this from 1 Timothy 5, 9 to 10? A widow who is put on the list for support must be a woman who is at least 60 years old and was faithful to her husband. She must be well respected by anyone because of the good she has done. Has she brought up her children well? Has she been kind to strangers and served other believers humbly? Has she helped those who are in trouble? Has she always been ready to do good? And so here he's talking about taking care of the elderly in the church, taking care of older widowed women in the church, but says they have to be people who took care of others, and especially the brothers and sisters in the faith. Or how about Hebrews 13, 2? Don't forget to show hospitality to strangers, for some who have done this have entertained angels without realizing it. Or how about 1 Peter 4, 9? Cheerfully share your home with those who need a meal or a place to stay. Or how about these words of Jesus in Matthew 10, 40? Anyone who receives you receives me, and anyone who receives me receives the Father who sent me. Or John 13, 20, Jesus speaking again. I tell you the truth, anyone who welcomes my messenger is welcoming me, and anyone who welcomes me is welcoming the Father who sent me. See, when we look at this and we really understand it, we know that Christians are supposed to show hospitality, especially to other Christians. We're supposed to be hospitable, helpful. We're supposed to care for the needy in our midst. We're supposed to really, truly minister to people. Like I said, we will talk more about the rebellious one on Friday, but just a, as a little bit heading in that direction, there's one in the church who has refused to accept anyone who's come from John's household or anyone who's come from John's office or however you want to put it. And so he won't accept the traveling missionaries, the traveling teachers, the emissaries of their bishop. John, he won't do it. And so he is causing a black mark on the church. It'd be like the superintendent comes to our church and we are rude to him. 
We wouldn't do that, would we? We're United Methodists. If our district superintendent shows up, we're going to show him kindness. We're going to offer him a meal, even if it's in our power to do so. We're going to try to care for him. If he needs to stay in the community overnight, someone's going to offer him a place to stay. That's the way that Christians are supposed to be with other Christians. When it talks about strangers here, it's not talking about people outside the church, however. That's a whole other topic for a whole other day. He's talking about people that Gaius didn't really know personally, but he knew that they came from John, and so he gave them hospitality. I want to talk to you about one more thing, and that is the attitude with which Gaius served, regardless of this man Diotrophes, who is not even acknowledging the authority of John. John is the bishop. He is an apostle of Jesus Christ. And when he sends people to the church, they were supposed to show hospitality and listen to what they had to say. But we have one who is disobedient. Gaius, however, knows what he's supposed to do. He is faithful to the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And in his faithfulness to the truth, he makes sure that these others are taken care of. And there's a principle here that we as Christians should hold on to, and it's very clear and it's very simple. The disobedience of others should not cause you to be disobedient. Hear that again. The disobedience of others should not cause you to be disobedient. There are people within the church today, within the organized church, and when I say organized, the body of Christ, okay, let's be real simple. Those who would call themselves Christians regardless of their local congregation or denomination. So there are people within the universal church who are being very disobedient to the word of God. There are people who will have us to go down a wrong path and follow heresy or moral equivocation, or just moral degradation, because that's what they want. And they will try to say that it is God's will. And many people will follow them. Many people will accept their teaching. But someone who is walking in the truth should stand firm even if their entire local congregation goes the wrong way, goes against the Word of God, even if their entire conference, we're Methodists, we have conferences, even if their entire conference goes the wrong way, they still must hold on to the Word of God and stand firm on it. Even if the whole denomination says that something that's wrong is now right, or changes our theology and does whatever with it, you know, goes to universalism or goes to some sort of uh, new age spirituality or whatever the denomination does. If the whole denomination goes off the rails and stops walking in the truth, we as individual believers in Jesus Christ, as the true body of Christ, must still be obedient to Christ and his word. We must walk in the truth regardless. And so John is encouraging Gaius, and he is commending Gaius for being faithful, for following after the truth and not allowing the disobedience of Diotrophes to lead him into disobedience himself. I want to encourage you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, it is easy for us to get caught up in the world. It is easy for us to get caught up in another form of Christianity that is not biblically based. It's very easy for us to follow the crowd. But all of us are supposed to stand up and be obedient, be faithful, be walking in the truth, regardless of what anybody else does in the church or outside of the church. We are to be faithful. I want to encourage you to do that. Make make my joy complete. Make John's joy complete. Make the Holy Spirit's joy complete by remaining faithful to the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And don't forget to show hospitality to strangers. You may just entertain an angel even though you won't be aware of it. 
Well, I hope that these lessons are sinking into your heart, and I hope that they are as powerful for you as they are for me as I teach them, and that you will continue to grow in the way of the Lord and walk in His truth daily. Amen? Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, there are those who claim the name of Christian, but yet are not walking in your truth. There are those who are within the church, even those who put on the robe on Sunday morning sometimes, that are not teaching the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ and whose lives do not reflect your truth. Help us not to be led astray by all of that. Help us not to let someone else's disobedience be the reason for our own disobedience, but instead help us to be faithful as Gaius was, regardless of the circumstances we find ourselves in. Lord, may we walk in your truth every day. Holy Spirit, give us that strength that we need so that we will not stumble, but we will be fully immersed in walking in your truth faithfully today and always. Be with those who are sick today, Lord. Give them strength and healing. Be with those who are discouraged, Lord. Just enliven their joy and, and help them to see that you are still in control. Be with those who are depressed, Lord. Give them peace of mind and heart and lift them up. Be with those, Lord, who are dealing with situations that we can't even begin to understand. Help them to know that in the midst of it all, you are walking with them. Lord, we'll just give you all the glory and thanksgiving for this and for all of your goodness in our lives. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Well, until tomorrow, my brothers and sisters in Christ, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face smile upon you, and may he give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You have a great rest of the day. God is faithful, forever God is strong.